We're continuing with uh, free response questions from uh, the 2003 AP exam. Number three, uh, the rate of fuel consumption in gallons per minute recorded during an airplane flight is given by the twice differentiable and uh, strictly increasing function r of time t. The graph of r and the table of selected values, uh, r of t, for the time interval between 0 and 90 minutes are shown. And we have a table of values, um, t in minutes, and then r, of, r of t, these values represent a rate gallons per minute uh, used um, uh, uh, the, uh, the gallons per minute at these time intervals. So um, for part A, uh, find uh, use the data from the table to find an approximation of R prime of 45. Um, show the computation that leads to your answer and indicate uh, units of measure. Now R of T is gallons per minute and we're looking for r prime of 45 so we're looking for the rate of change at um, around 45 now we don't have a function where we can find the exact uh, rate of change at 45 but we can simply uh, find the slope of two ordered pairs around 40 and that will give us an approximation because that's what uh, that's all the problem is asking for us to find so R prime of 45 is simply the change in consumption rate divided by the change in time. So I just picked two order pairs around 45, um, so 40 and 50. So R of 50 minus R of 40 all over 50 minus 40. So change in consumption rate over change in time. So then these values are 55 minus 40 over 50 minus 40. This reduces to be 15 over 10 or 1.5. Um, now uh, R of T is uh, gallons per minute so the rate of gallons per minute will be gallons per minute squared so gallons per minute per minute kind of like going from velocity to acceleration uh, for part b the rate of fuel consumption is increasing fastest at time t equals 45 what is the value of r double prime of 45 so if we are looking for um, First of all, we know that uh, uh, R prime of 45 is at a maximum because that's what it says here. Increasing fastest at time equals 45. Then what is the value of R double prime of 45? So if R prime of 45 is at its greatest, then that means the derivative must be at zero. Okay, so if R prime of 45 is at a maximum, then that means its derivative must be equal to zero, right? Just like if you were to find um, the highest point on a graph, the highest point would mean that its derivative is equal to zero, right? If you're looking at a, um, a ball that is thrown up in the air and the highest point that it reaches will be where um, uh, the, uh, uh, the velocity is zero. Okay, part C. Uh, approximate the value of the definite integral of r of t from 0 to 90 using left Riemann sum. Five um, so I took the table of values and I um, rearranged it in a horizontal fashion. I think we're more used to seeing it that way. And if we um, orient it uh, horizontally, then we can compute, um, uh, we can first of all um, divide this into five subintervals. And then the first subinterval, um, this between 0 and 30, that will be the width times the appropriate height. So the R of T um, values represents the height. So the width is 30 times 20. That will be the first rectangle. Second rectangle, we look at the distance between 30 and 40. That is 10 times 30. And then 10 times 40. Uh, the distance between 15 and 70 is 20. 20 times 55. And then between 70 and 90 is 20, 20 times 65. So we're adding up the areas of all these uh, rectangles, and we get 3,700. Okay. Now, since R of t is increasing, a left Riemann sum uh, would indicate that this is an under approximation. If you were to draw um, left uh, rectangles uh, for these, um, uh, for uh, 
this graph, because there's an e increasing graph, a left Riemann sum will always um, provide us with uh, gaps underneath the graph, um, um, showing that it's an under approximation. Okay, for part uh, D, um, for B, between 0 and 90 minutes, explain the meaning of uh, the definite integral of R of T from 0 to B in terms of fuel consumption for the plane. Explain the meaning of 1 over B, definite integral of 0 to B of R of T in terms of fuel consumption for the plane, and indicate um, the units of measure. So if R of T is the rate of consumption, then the accumulation of the rate of consumption would provide us with the total amount of fuel that is used in the first B minutes. So whatever that B value is, whether it is 40, 50, 90, 150, uh, from 0 to whatever that value is, uh, would be the total amount of fuel used in those given minutes. Okay. Now, if you recognize this, as the average value theorem, 1 over b minus a times the definite integral from a to b of r of t dt, then we can simply say this is the average rate of whatever this function is. So the average, this r of t represents fuel consumption, uh, uh, rate of fuel consumption. So this will represent the average rate of fuel consumption. And this will be in gallons per minute during the first um, b minutes, whatever b value is. All right, let's move on to number four. We have a graph um, of f prime. Uh, let f be the function defined on the closed interval between negative three and four, with f of zero is equal to three. The graph of f prime, which is the derivative of f, consists of one line segment and a semicircle as shown. So we have our line segment, we have our semicircle. This represents our f prime graph. Okay. On what interval, if any, is our function increasing? Now, if we're looking at the derivative graph, then we want to be able to interpret this in the correct fashion, which means any um, values that are above the x-axis represents positive slope. Anything below represents negative slope. Remember, your y values no longer represent um, uh, position. These y values represent uh, slope. So the x-intercepts represent where the slope is 0. So we can just make a sign line to kind of, to kind of get a, uh, um, a visual as to what the original graph may look like. So our endpoints at negative 3 and at 4. Our critical points is at negative 2 and positive 2. Those are where our x-intercepts are, where our slope is 0. And then the portion to the between negative 3 and negative 2, we see these values are this graph is above the x-axis, x -axis, so that's positive slope, followed by negative slope, or negative values, negative slope. And then continuing after it hits a slope of 0, it's still below the x-axis, so um, negative slope. So that means f is increasing uh, in this interval from negative 3 to negative 2 because f prime is positive for these values from negative 3 to negative 2. Part b, uh, find the x-coordinate of each point of inflection. Uh, and point of inflection uh, from the uh, derivative graph would mean where the slope is at its steepest um, before it changes back. So we're basically looking for the max and the mins, the hills and valleys, for the f prime graph. Because um, so this value here and this value here will represent the point of inflection for our graph. Okay. And if these are our points of inflection, then the slope of f prime represents con concavity. So this portion is concave down because the slope is moving in the negative direction, concave up, moving in the positive direction and then concave down. So we have that represented here. Uh, critical points at 0 and 2, we see there are change of signs at uh, these critical points, so therefore point of inflection occurs at x equals 0 and x equals 2 because f total prime changes signs. Okay, Part C, find an equation for the line tangent to the graph of f at point 0, 3. If we want to find the tangent line equation, we simply need the ordered pair. So they tell us the ordered pair, which is 0, 3. And next, we need to find the slope. So to find the slope, remember, we're looking at the slope graph. So if I find 
Okay, if I find the ordered pair at 0, which is negative 2, then that means at this ordered pair, um, we're going to get a slope of negative 2. So we have the ordered pair at 0, 3, we have the slope at negative 2, and so plug this into our point slope form. We get y minus 3 is equal to negative 2, parentheses x minus 0, or you can write it in slope intercept form. Okay, part D. Find f negative 3 and f of 4, show the work that leads to your answer. So let's see what's given to us. If we want to find our position, we need to always know where our starting position is. And they tell us our starting position is at 0, 3. Um, that's given to us um, at the, in the first paragraph here. First sentence, actually, f of 0 is equal to 3. So if I want to find f of negative 3, then I need to start at my, um, I need to start at, uh, my initial position. And I have to go backwards if I want to get to negative 3. So the definite integral from 0 to negative 3. Now, if we're trying to evaluate this definite integral, we usually like to evaluate definite integrals where the lower bound is the smaller value. So I'm going to switch these around. So I'm going to move the negative 3 down to this bottom um, uh, as the bottom bound, lower bound, and the 0. I'm going to move up top as the upper bound. Okay? But if you can recall, what happens if we decide to switch these bounds around? Okay, if we switch these bounds around to make our calculations, uh, calculations a little bit more straightforward, that means we have to um, change the sign of the definite integral. So I'll change the bounds from negative, um, lower bound being negative 3, upper bound being 0, but because of that, that flip-flop, I'm going to have to change the sign from a positive to a negative. So f of 0 minus the definite integral from negative 3 to 0, and we're simply adding the areas from negative 3 to 0. So from negative 3 to 0, we have a triangle here. I find a triangle being 1 half. Triangle here, I find a triangle being a negative 2. So 1 half minus 2 is negative 1.5. And negative 1.5 plus our initial position of 3, 3 minus, 1 point, 3 minus a negative 1.5 uh, gives us 4.5 or 9 halves. Okay. Uh, we also want to find f of 4. So f of 4, we want to find that position. We need to find, we need to start with the original position, f of 0, plus um, the distance we travel from 0 to 4 of f prime. And we simply look at our um, graph to find the area there. So uh, if you look at the shaded region, uh, the shaded region is created by taking a rectangle and subtracting uh, the semicircle. Okay, so rectangle is 4 times 2 base times height, and our semicircle is 1 half pi r squared, and our r radius is 2. So combine those together, um, we're going to get um, negative 8 plus 2 pi, and then we tack on our initial position, so 3 minus 8 plus 2 pi gives us negative 5 plus 2 pi. 